after some delay, I'd like to look at the bad data Newton polynomial versus the corresponding Hermite polynomial. So we're going to have three data points with x values 0, 1, and 2, which I'm calling x0, x1, and x2. The bad function values are all going to be 0. So when we construct the Newton table, the x values are x0 equals 0, x1 equal 1, x2 equal 2. The corresponding function values, or f bracket values, for x0, x1, and x2 are all zeros. In order to find the Newton coefficients, I have to find the divided difference based on x0 and x1, the one based on x1 and x2, and once I have those two, I can find the divided difference based on x0, x1, and x2, this number, this number, and this number are going to be the coefficients that we had previously been calling a0, a1, and a2. To find this one, I use our divided difference formula. The top of the fraction is 0 minus 0. The bottom is 1. So I get 0 for this value. To get this one, I use the same kind of divided difference formula. It's still 0 minus 0 divided by something that isn't 0, which is 0. So this divided difference is also 0. To get the final one that I need, I make use of our recursion formula once again. I'll take this number minus that number, which is 0 minus 0, divided by x number 2 minus x number 0. This turns out to be 0 divided by 2, which is 0. So as we expected, this coefficient is 0, that one is 0, and that one is 0. What that means to me is that the interpolating polynomial using the Newton divided difference form is 0 plus 0 times x minus x number 0 plus 0 times x minus x number 0 times x minus x number 1. This is identically equal to 0 no matter what x is. My interpolating polynomial is, as we thought it would be, the horizontal line y equals zero. To pursue our Hermite interpolating idea, I'm going to have not only the x values and the function values, which in this particular example are all zero, but I'm also going to tell you the slope of the tangent line at x zero is pi, the slope of the tangent line at x1 is negative pi, and the slope of the tangent line at x2 is back to being pi again. Instead of having three x values, I'm going to have six z values numbered 0 through 5. Originally, this was a mixture of actual x values and x values plus a small number epsilon. And then what we did, if you'll remember, we took the limit of every number in the table as epsilon tended to zero. And we found out that more or less, the calculations will be done using the usual sort of recursion formula, except column number k equal one requires special treatment. We figured out in this column k equal one, in those circumstances in which you would get division by zero, you must replace the divided difference with a derivative value. That's going to happen at the first row entry in column k equal one, and then i equal three, and then i equal five. So this number is a derivative value. This number is that number minus that number divided by the difference of the corresponding z numbers. This number is a derivative value. It's f prime at x1.
This one is calculated in the usual recursive manner, that minus that, divided by the difference of two z numbers. And this one is a derivative value. This one is going to be f prime evaluated at x number two. Once we've gotten column k equal one established, then the z numbers that appear on the bottom of the fraction have indexes that differ by more than one, and therefore we are never going to get division by zero. When we took the limit, for instance, we found out that to get this number, it's this number minus that number divided by z2 minus z0, and likewise for the rest of the column. We calculate this column using the same recursive formula, that one, and then this last divided difference is this number minus that number divided by z5 minus z0. It's the usual approach. The coefficients are going to be this number, this number, this number, that one, that one, and that one. Now, as we said, column k equal one requires special treatment. So I've written out in detail what we said we we're going to do. This first number is a derivative value, which we said was pi. This one is zero minus zero divided by one minus zero, which is zero. This one, if I just tried to use the usual formula, I would get division by zero. So we use the derivative value instead. It's going to be f prime at x1, which was negative pi. This one is this number minus this number divided by z4 minus z3, which works out to be zero. And lastly, this should be the last of my derivative values, which was back to pi. What I'm going to do in my calculations is I'm going to build my table up one column at a time, just like I'll do when I write my program. So we know our z numbers. We know the function values to go with them. We have established column k equal one. The next thing I have to do is to calculate these quantities in column k equal two. But as we said, we're just going to use the usual recursion formula. Not to belabor the point, do the usual recursion relation, the details of which I specified here. The numbers that go in the next column are going to be negative pi, negative pi, pi, and pi. So in my big table that I'm building up, these will be the numbers that go in the next column. So the information I have available to me at the moment now looks like this. This is column k equals zero. This is column k equal one. I've got to figure out what column number k equals two is. So writing in the information that we've just figured out, we now know not only column k equals zero, k equal one and k equal two, we'll use the information in column k equal two to calculate the numbers that we need for column k equals three. Using the exactly similar recursion relation, we see that the column number three, k equals three, is going to have coefficients zero pi and zero. Since this was getting too wide to fit on one page, I've split it into two pages. The most recently calculated divided differences are in this column. For the next column, I have to calculate these two divided differences. And then after I know that, I need to know only one more divided difference. This is going to be this quantity minus this quantity divided by z5 minus z1. This is going to be this number minus that number 
divided by z4 minus z0. Doing the calculations as usual, the first number is pi over 2, and the second one is negative pi over 2. So finally, there's one last divided difference to calculate. The last one is going to be this number minus that number divided by z5 minus z0, which after doing the arithmetic is negative pi over 2. So we're going to do a sanity check when we write our program. Column number zero is supposed to consist of all zeros. Column number one is supposed to look like pi zero, negative pi zero pi. Column number zero, one, two is supposed to look like negative pi, negative pi, pi, pi. The remaining columns are supposed to look like 0 pi 0, and then the next one, pi over 2, negative pi over 2, and then the last one should just be the single number, negative pi over 2. If we see any significant difference between what comes out of our Hermite calculation and these numbers that we've tabulated here, then something is wrong.